One of them books before Billy. them. Welcome home, Barry. Welcome home. Jason. Well, come in, come in, come in, come in. Oh, am I glad to see you, Barry. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Uh, as for these crutches here, yeah, I'm throwing them overboard any day now. <laughs> A friend of yours here, eh? Huh? Yeah. Well, now, don't tell me this is Jack. Bless me, what a fine, big lad. <laughs> and uh, you're sure you're really feeling all right, Barry? Oh, blast you, Jason. Stop asking me how I feel. Well, I've been worried about you. Last word we had was from Eli Bacon after he hailed you off New Zealand a year ago. Nah. Yeah, I thought maybe I'd kill you letting you go to sea hurt like you were. Eli Bacon. Can't wait to sew me up in canvas. How much oil did Mr. Long Nose Bacon bring back? Well, he had bad luck. Fourteen hundred barrels. Fourteen hundred. <laughs> What's the record for this part? You recall? <laughs> you know very well the record's two thousand two hundred and seventeen barrels. Well, it ain't no more. What's that? It's two thousand two hundred and forty-six. Say, Barry, is that the truth? Or are you just? Mr. Stone said maybe it's even a world record. Uh, mm -hmm. Back to them books. That's the last time, though. Hi, sir. Barry, I. I can't tell you how proud I am for you. Yeah. Well, it doesn't often happen for a man to have a record to retire on. Retire? Who says I'm retiring? Well, I, I didn't mean to bring it up right now, but, uh, well, why not, Barry? The board of directors are giving you a pension, 3000 a year. Oh, ain't that nice now? Figured I ain't got another voyage in me, huh? Oh, be reasonable. It's not just the directors. The insurance company says so, <laughs> too. Now, don't tell me you want to go to sea again. Well, maybe so. Maybe not. I ain't decided. Well, what is it? Is it the boy? You want to leave someone else named Joy on the quarter deck? Because if that's it, it's nothing but pride. Now, look. My nah, hand's looking. And I ain't no directors, no, no insurance company doing my deciding for me. No, no you me there. <laughs> all right, Benny, all right. Yeah, uh, you'll be needing this. Key to your house. Yeah, uh, thank you. Everything's clean and ready for you. Mm. It's a right pleasant house, Barry. Yeah. You and the boy should be real comfortable there. Me and the boy be real comfortable aboard this vessel. Good to see you, Jed. He's a fine lad, Barry. Yeah, Thank sure. you. Are we going home now, sir? Huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, boy. We're going home. <laughs> Grandpa, like you told me to. Oh, well. Well, I've, uh, i just been calling on the school superintendent. You'll take the examination tomorrow morning. Yes, Grandpa. If I fail, I can't go to see no more. That's it, ain't it, Grandpa? Uh, I ain't saying it is, and I ain't saying it ain't. And no more gab about failing, you hear me? But I, I just don't know nothing about this book running bill. It ain't bilge. Useless, maybe, but don't you ever let me hear you call me bills. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, what's written you special? What book you been studying? This one. It's a grammar book. Well, what don't you know about it? Well, well for one thing, I don't know what parse means. Parse? It says parse the following sentence. Hmm, parse. In the front of the book, it says parse is a verb transitive. Yeah, I was just about to tell you that, boy. <laughs> Excepting that I, I didn't think you'd understand. I don't. Well, uh, it means... Um, it says it means to resolve. I know what it means. I wish you'd tell me, then. Well, <clears throat> uh, resolve means to, uh, uh, to, to kind of take something apart. Like you take a knot apart to see how it's tied. Now, well, that's what you do to a sentence. You bust it all up into adverbs and adjectives. It's interesting, isn't it? I'm scared, Grandpa. I just can't think anymore. I get all mixed up. I just can't think. All right, boy. All right, now. Oh, you've done enough for one day. Time is both in our bed. Can I sleep in your room, Grandpa? It's got two beds, and I... Well, it's being your first night to show. Thank you, Grandpa. Yeah. Grab hold of that lamp, boy. Get above. Lively now. Lively. <laughs> Grandpa? Huh? Just now when you were praying, 
do it clear like I wasn't going to pass the examination. Oh, I didn't mean to, Jed. I was just letting the Lord know that if he's got some disappointment for us to face tomorrow, that, well... I'll try, Grandpa. Honest, I will. But if you don't pass, well, it could be that the Lord means it's for our own good. But I've got to go to see Grandpa to get raised proper, like we always said. And I'm saying that maybe he don't want me to raise you in no place like that. You know, it's a rough... Tough, hard life, boy. I want to go to see Grandpa. Yeah, sure you do. Sure you do. <laughs> uh, Jed, this house here, you don't remember much about it, do you? I, I was pretty young then, I guess. Yeah. Mighty interesting subject, remembering. Mighty scientific subject. It is? Yeah. Now, just being scientific... You wouldn't remember the night you was brought in here to my room to sleep, would you? Night your ma died. I don't think so, Grandpa. No, just lonesome you was. Just lonesome. I think I remember, Grandpa. Kind of. I had to kiss you goodnight. Even just like I knew your ma. <laughs> Seemed to make you forget about being lonesome. Funny, ain't it? I guess so, Grandpa. Yeah. Uh, I don't suppose that right now you'd, uh, you, uh... Yeah? Oh, nothing, boy, nothing, nothing. Now, you was mighty young, like you said. But go to sleep. Go to sleep. So, if you'd like to wait here in my office, Captain Joy, until the examination is over... Uh, you, you sure ain't bothering you, Mr. Bush. <laughs> After all, you being the school superintendent... I only it. wish you'd stop worrying about the boy. Mr. Bush, you're a married man, huh? Yeah. Father and children? Uh, no, we've never been blessed with any Captain Joy. But you know about him, though. Uh, <laughs> I guess it ain't so hard, is it? Uh, being a parent? Well, it ain't just being a parent. It's being a parent ashore. Well, some pretty fair people have managed to get raised ashore. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Old Lincoln now. He made it handsome. Most handsome. The Lincoln's folks were shore folks. And that makes a difference. If need be, Captain, if Jed doesn't pass, I think you'll make it handsome, too. You've given the boys something to look up to. That's the hardest part. You brought them a record, didn't you? A record that will stand. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you the kind of a record I brought home. I had a right here in my hand to keep Jed out there for one more voyage. That's all I needed, just one more voyage. Only it, it ain't going to come about. And why? Because of me. Because I kept them ignorant. Because I couldn't teach him, Papa. I didn't know it meant that much to you. Uh, uh, if you'll excuse me, Captain, I have a message for one of the teachers. I almost forgot. Yes, Mr. Bush, that's the kind of a record I brought home. Arithmetic, spelling, and English, Mr. Bush. He's working on geography now. Well? Simply deplorable. So far, his average is 32. Miss Hopkins, you will give him a mark of 70. What? What did you say, I sir? I said you will give him a mark of 70. I am not going to tell that old man that his boy failed. But he did fail. And if you want me to falsify an examination, just... All right, then. You tell him. Go on. Tell him that he has to raise that boy on shore. That he can't take the last of the joys to see again to make a whaling master out of him. You go ahead. I'm not man enough. But they have no right, Mr. Bush. No right to send him where the only things they learn about are the sin and that terrible rough life. It's not enough. There's a little matter called character, Miss Hopkins. That old man has a textbook that builds character. Has no words, Miss Hopkins. But if I could learn to read that book of his, I'd give up knowing how to spell. And I'd give up a good deal more if I had that boy's chance to be a man. Oh, I know, I know. But the point is... The point is, Miss Hopkins... That we will mark the paper 70. Come in, come in. Glad you stopped by the office. You can stay there, right, Jason. Just tell me what you've done about refitting the vessel. Well, we haven't done anything yet. Uh, oh, I, I'd like you to meet Mr. Lunsford here, Mr. Lunsford. This is Captain Joy. I do. Glad to know you, sir. Well, what do you mean you ain't done nothing? Well, I... Oh, I see. Jet must have passed, eh? Passed? Of course he passed. Seventy percent in every subject. <laughs> Not bad for a boy who never went to school. 
Now look, where's it eating? We got a crew to line up and the first mate to find. <laughs> Strange, I was just talking about that with Mr. Lunsford. Oh, you were, huh? Yes, Mr. Lunsford's from Boston. And uh, was he to get a chance to sail with you? Well, it might work out just fine all around. Yeah. Young fella, ain't he, Jason? Yeah. Young and healthy. Well, I imagine I could survive another void, sir. <laughs> Jason. A body would happen and I can see the wheels run around your head. <laughs> Lunsford comes from Boston. Boston, where them insurance companies but <laughs> Now, it wouldn't be possible that Mr. Lunsford got his master's papers on him, would it? Well, uh, well, yes, yes, yes. Look, uh, suppose we let Captain Joy look the record over if he wants to, and if he's got any questions to ask... Yeah, that's a mighty fine idea, young fellow. Yeah. Uh, let's see them papers, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Nah. Yeah. Rigby and Son. That's good for him. Later promoted the first mate of the Albatross. Yes, good ship. Mm -hmm. hey, what's this? Just some school credit, sir. Went to school to learn how to take wheel, huh? <laughs> now, that's mighty interesting. What they learn you in that school, Mr. Lunsford? I studied engineering, seamanship, navigation, marine biology. Marine biology. What? Biology. Hey, now, I take it mighty kindly if you were to tell me about that, Mr. Lunsford. Yes, sir. Marine biology covers the feeding habits of the whale, his seasonal movements, his breeding and calving habits. Oh, now, that's mighty wonderful interest in it, Jason. <laughs> Bearing, I, I think that we'd better get on. No, no, I'm worried. For near 200 years, my folks made a terrible living taking whale. And not one of them ever studied that marine by, 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 well, what do you call it? You reckon we was all that time not knowing that we didn't know what we was doing, Mr. Lunsford? Captain Joy, I'd like to have been a fourth generation whaleman, too. All right, I'm not. But I do know my trade, I'm and I said... sorry, Barry. I, I thought you'd be pleased with Mr. Lunsford's record. Mm, now, what give you a notion that I ain't pleased? Well, he suits me fairly proper. Yes, sir, he suits me fine. Oh, you ought to make a mighty interesting voyage, Jason. Mr. Lunsford can tell me about this by, uh, what do you call it? And, uh, and it just might be that there's a little point or two where I could tell him. Against the time, I mean, when he takes over a command of his own. Well, it just may be that uh, Mr. Lunsford would rather ship aboard another vessel. No, no, the ship and the master suit me fine. If you'll excuse me, Captain Joy, I'll see you at the vessel, sir. You bet you will, Mr. Lunsford. <laughs> Well, Mr. Lunsford? We've cleared the cape, sir. Full sails aloft, making ten knots, sir. Mm hmm You formed any opinion of the crew yet, Mr. Lunsford? They appear able enough, sir. Yep. Some good things about them, my boy. You may have noticed that most of my crew generally sign on again. Out of affection, no doubt, sir. Could be, Mr. Lunsford. Oh, yes, could be. That's possible. However, I make no contact with the crew. Now, maybe you think that's because I'm an old man who has needed these here crutches to make my way about. <laughs> Is that what you think, Mr. Lunsford? I hadn't thought about it at all, sir. Uh, I deal with my crew entirely through my first officer and don't meddle. Yes, sir. For instance, it so happens I got Tim aboard. But his being my grandson don't make him no different from no other folks were. Yes, sir. Now, but we got a, a special little problem, Mr. Lunsford. My grandson was permitted to make this voyage with the firm understanding that he received his proper portion of the plan, like the law says. But whilst he was cabin boy, I earned him. But him being crew now, it's different. I dasn't meddle with the crew, no wise whatever, like we said. See, Mr. Lunsford? Uh, well, yes, yes, but then uh, who's going to... Well, it's a vexing problem. At least, it was a vexing problem. Until it come to me to remember you and your school. Because, from now on, it can be your duty to oversee his book learning 
just like this vessel promised. Oh, but my time's going to be pretty well taken up. Oh, get the lessons in in time. Your off hours will be fine. <laughs> and don't look so long faced. I had the feeling when you come aboard that you was ready to take on extra duty was the chance to show itself. Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? Oh, not a thing, Mr. Lunson. <laughs> this here has been a mighty interesting chat. Yes, sir. Mighty interesting. In just a moment, our stars will return with Act Two of Down to the Sea in Ship. And now here's Libby Collins with the Lux Movie News of the Week. Libby, didn't I see you at Universal International's preview of Katie Did It? I was there, all right, John. And I want to report to Anne Blythe's fans that she's a real comer. You know, she won one of Photoplay's gold medal awards for 1950. In her new picture, she's teamed with handsome Mark Stevens and is the center of a slightly scandalous story. As Katie, she poses for a billboard with bare shoulders coming out of a lily pond, and that makes her hometown blush. <laughs> Katie does it to repay her uncle's gambling debt, but her third new in the land is shocked. Now, if you want to know whether she marries the artist who painted her or the hometown boy who offers to save her from disgrace, see who he did it himself. I take it that Anne of the lovely shoulders uh, dresses quite conventionally at other times. Oh, yes, and just the kind of play girls her age love. A plaid cotton shirt with slacks for casual wear, and a darling shirt maker dress in rows, simple but beautifully tailored. Perfect summer luxuries, I'd say. Indeed they are, John. And this summer's cottons have never been lovelier. New Oxford color fashion is here just in the nick of time. It keeps white cottons beautifully white. Prints look so gay and alive, even if you're dreaming. All colors have zing and sparkle, such as you've never seen before. It's a fact. No other way of washing... Leaves colors fresher or brighter. Since this is National Cotton Week, the fabulous new cottons come to mind first. But New York's with color freshener is just as wonderful for all whites, all colors, and so safe for everything safe in water. You should hear Hollywood screen stars rave about it. Anne Blythe says it gives the most wonderful result she's ever seen. Now, while your cottons are new, start them off right with this sensational care. New Lux with color freshener. Your bright print. Your dreamy colors, your paper white, will sing all summer along. Get a big box of new Lux with color freshener tomorrow. Give your washables that nice as new Lux look again and again. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. Act two of Down to the Sea in Ship, starring Richard Woodmark as Dan Lunsford and Lionel Barrymore as Captain Daring Joy. <laughs> By, and the Bride of Bedford, two sails aloft, sweeps onward to the South Atlantic. On the after deck, Captain Joy's grandson keeps an appointment with his new teacher. Well, let's see, you passed the fourth grade examination, huh? I got to tell you, Mr. Lunsford, it was easy. Well, I'm sure it was. Look at the teacher you had. All right, now it says here in your book that Farmer Brown has a box of 32 apples. He gives eight away, six more lot before he can get them to market. Now, how many apples are left for sale? I don't know. Hey, look, look at the price of his port side. I asked you a question, mister. I don't know, sir. Besides, I don't see why I have to learn about farmers. Look, 32 apples. He gives eight away, six more lot. Now, how many are left? Seven? Oh, Look, I wonder if we try real hard, we could find something that you do know. What's the longest river in the world? The Narragansett? The Narragansett. What was the first battle of the revolution? I don't know. Why did there have to be so many questions? Grant is the best grandman in the world. He didn't have to learn about farmers and with apples. And look at Abraham Lincoln. He didn't have to have no schooling to be president. Mm-hmm. Well, it wouldn't take long to figure out where you heard that one. All right, mister, I guess we can't get pearls out of a pelican. There are others aboard this ship who want to learn. About apples? About taking whales. We're putting two crews into the water. Mr. Sue's taking one, I'm taking the other. That is, as soon as I pick my men. You need to tell them, Mr. Lunsford. Tell him, Mr. Lunsford. I know all about it. Tell her. Just wait a second. You report can... to the cook. Maybe there's something you could do to help him. The, the cook, sir? You've got your orders, mister. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, 
Where's that coffee, Mr. Tubbs? Coming, sir. Coming. Well, what's the matter with you, boy? Don't you feel like vittles? I'm all right. Try them with an apple, Mr. Tubbs. Uh, an apple, sir? Oh, no, no. Come to think of it, some people don't like apples. They don't even like the farmers who grow them. He had 32 apples. He gave eight away and six got rotten, so he had 18 left. And the Mississippi is the longest river in the world. And the first battle of Concord, and six times 11 is 66, and six times 12 is 72. And is there anything else you want to know, sir? Yes. Where's the sugar, Mr. Tubbs? Oh, <laughs> What are you looking at, mister? Can't see much over a rail at night. No, sir. You can't. I, uh... I was sort of hard on you, wasn't I? In front of the crew, too. I... I don't feel like talking, sir. Well, your grandfather's back there. Maybe you feel like talking to him. No, sir. Not special. Uh-huh. Well, we could talk about whale, you know. For instance, how big is a blue-thin cap when he's born? How old is he before he starts to travel? What does he eat that's different from other whales? Well, come on, mister. What's the matter? How big is he when he's born? Oh, 20 feet, maybe. Did you ever see one? No. Well, how do you know then? I studied about it. <laughs> yes, that's right, in books. What whales eat, how they behave, the sum of what a lot of men have found out about them. I could learn that. Sure, you could learn lots of things once you got the hang of studying. Even sevens. Well, what about sevens? Well, that's a mighty important number in a man's life. When he's seven, he changes from a child to a boy. Now, what's twice seven? Fourteen. That's right, and that's about when he stops being a boy and he starts growing into a man. Three times seven? Twenty-one. Yeah, that's when he's all the way grown up. <laughs> well, he thinks so anyway. But uh, let's jump ahead a little bit, shall we? What's ten times seven? Seventy. That's right, seventy. Seventy. That's the best age of all if a man has sense enough to meet it the way he ought to. Grandpa's 70. Oh, is he? <laughs> but that's a fine time of life, Jeb. A man can sit on his front porch in the sun and think about how good he used to be and leave the work of the world to younger and better men. What are you talking so loud for? Who am I? I didn't realize I was. Well, that's enough for now, boy. We'll take the eights tomorrow. You ain't mad at me anymore? Go on, get to bed. Can I miss you, Munchford? Good night, Jeff. Good night, Captain Joy. Ah, go to bed. <laughs> Younger and better men. Younger and better men, my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Mr. Joy. You got a minute to spare me? I'd like to inquire about your schooling. Oh, it's fine, sir. It's not a bit hard the way Mr. Lunsford teaches it. Hmm? That's your arithmetic, sir. He makes sense out of it. Like dog bark navigation and how to use it. What kind of navigation? Dog bark, sir. It's like when we're in a fog and we're near land or something. What do we do? What do we do? We throw a rock overside, and if there ain't no echo in the splash, we know we're in clear water. Don't you ever forget it. Oh, no, sir, I won't. Only Mr. Lunsford, he don't throw a rock over. Hmm, more likely it goes over one of the crew, huh, boy? Oh, no, sir. This is a silly to carry all those rocks, and all you have to do is shout. Shout? Shout at who? Just shout, sir, and then you count slow. And if any echo comes back and say five seconds, you multiply five times a thousand, because that's the speed of sound. Then you divide by two, because the sound has to go out and back. It gives you 2,500 feet, and that's the distance you're from land, or an iceberg, maybe. And, and that's dog bark. That's hogwash. Hogwash. Uh, anyway, sir, Mr. Lunsford's taking his boat out to practice. And he said that I can go with him. No, oh, no. You don't want to miss none of Mr. Lunsford's wisdom. Get on, Mr. Joy. Go on, get... Thank you, sir. <laughs> Excuse me for interrupting, Mr. Lunsford. Nice practice. 
Nice long practice, Mr. Lumpson. Very commendable. No wonder we got back at all with this vessel off our course. We might just as well have pulled for land. I expect you could have made it, too. You could have dog-barked it. <laughs> Full sails, Mr. Stewart. Hold your course. <laughs> Stand and watch, Mr. Munster. Yeah. After all that rowing you've done. Now, let me bring you a mug of coffee. No, thanks, Mr. Tubbs. All quiet below? All quiet, sir. You, uh, ain't got it figured out yet, have you, sir? What are you talking about? About why this vessel was off course this afternoon? He done it, raising that sail. Some people spit me, this just for the fun of it. You ain't had much truck with feelings, have you, Mr. Lunsford? Look, uh, maybe you'd better get back to your gal. Can't you see, sir, the, the captain, he kind of took the boy's feelings for granted, same as we do all our kin, but you're taking that boy away from him, Mr. Lunsford. You're taking something you've got no right to. That old man loves nothing outside of himself and whale oil. He dumped that kid on my deck himself. All I've done is try to hammer his little ABCs into No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. Why do you think he's here at sea where he ain't got the strength to be no more? What do you think's driving him on, huh? It's his love for that boy. Now, somebody's going to get hurt, Mr. Lunsford, but it ain't going to be him. Not now, not at his time of life. Not if I'd have to kill him. Mr. I think you believe everything you say, but that doesn't make it true. Well, I don't mean a cobbler's nickel to that boy. But if that's all it'll take to make you happy, that's easy. I'll dump him back in the old man's apron and quick, too. Well, it ain't going to be as easy as you think, sir. No? No, sir. Good night, Mr. Lunsford. Come in, come in. Oh, here we are. I admire the way you handled the crew today, Mr. Munson. We lost both whales, but for the training you give them, I have ended it in the log that way. Thank you, sir. But, uh... I'm here to talk about your grandson, sir. Oh. Seems to me Jed mentioned something that you ain't found time of late to give him his learning. Well, I, uh, I've been kind of busy, sir. <laughs> but he's coming along pretty well. I thought maybe he could go out on our next floor. Well, he's ready. Send him out. My boat crew's in fine shape. They'll give you their best, sir. Just what does that mean? Well, I, I thought you ought to... Well, I, I mean, with your liking for the boy, I, uh... Well, I thought you'd want to take him out and blood him yourself. <laughs> Mr. Lunsford, if any member of this crew is ready for blood and blood him, if you want to put him in your boat, put him there. But don't make such a pother about it. Don't come in here telling me we're in the lower boat. A clear, Mr. Lunsford? Yes, sir, but just so that we understand each other correctly. Extra men in the lookout rooms, as many as you can spare. I 
Toronto. My God and my strength, in him will I trust. Under me, O Lord, I lift my eyes and my soul. Bring him back, O Lord. Bring back the ball. Ford and Ann Baxter do a moving interpretation of Hogan and his wife Valerie. 
and the sacrifices they go through to dig into professional golf. I'm afraid my score isn't good enough, but I've always been a great admirer of Ben Hogan. My greatest regret is meeting him at that event for Los Angeles Open when he came back like a champion. Well, too bad you missed it, Jean. I was fortunate enough to have been there. Dennis O'Keefe and June Harris, as the Hogan's close friends, may follow the sound of your life of fortune. Now, what's the next stop on your circuit, Jean? I'm not quite sure, Mr. Keeley, but I always keep my suitcase half packed. I hope that includes Lux Flake, Jean. It most certainly does, Mr. Kennedy. I'm never without it for lingerie and stockings wherever I go. And this new Lux is more wonderful than it ever was. Thank you, Jean Mayberry. That's what so many screen stars tell us. June Havrick is practically a commuter to New York and Europe and never goes without a box of Lux Flakes tucked in her suitcase. There's a mighty good reason why stars like Ann Baxter and June Havrick can tip on Lux. New Lux with color freshener is perfect care for lingerie. White laces stay whiter than ever. Delicate colors look gloriously alive. Print fresher than spring. Stocking colors, too, look clearer. Washable silk Rayons, nylons, and gossamer cottons couldn't look lovelier, couldn't be safer. But don't just take my word for it. Try it yourself. Get a big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow. Get your slips and nighties, your washable negligees and house coats, all your personal washables, that nice as new Lux look. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mr. 
sore and cool. That's all, Mr. Lennon.
I understand you're still making pictures about the Navy. Well, last time it was the Marines, sir, and this time it's the Navy. A story with the valiant part the underwater demolition team played in the last war. Better known as the Frogmen. Frogmen, sir. I'm a boat man, myself. You, uh, you mean Lux Flakes? Of course I mean Lux Flakes. Did you think I was a Lux girl? <laughs> Men here. Rick, I trust Mrs. Whitmark took plenty of luck along when you went on location to the Virgin Islands. Oh, sure, Bill. We had everything. And for the pictures, 20th Century Fox took along seven explosion experts to rig up a gigantic invasion barrage and uh, all sorts of technicians for filming the underwater sequence. It reminds me of uh, all the heroes of the last war. The famous 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Metro Golden Mayor just got Van Johnson in a picture about them. Go for broke. Well, what does the expression uh, go for broke mean? Well, that shook the world. <laughs> Which is just what happens at its world premiere in Honolulu on May the 4th. And uh, what's to be the premiere in the Lux Radio Theater next week, sir? Next week we'll have some especially fine entertainment because it's a family comedy. And what a family. It's the 20th Century Fox production of Cheaper by the Dozen. The trials and tribulations of rearing 12 children. And as father, we'll have none other than inimitable, incomparable perfectionist, Kristen Webb. We'll look forward to it, Bill. Good night. Good night. One of Hollywood's most winsome young stars is Diana Lynn, who's blonde and vivacious, always has that precious ability look. For a quick beauty pickup, Diana says, there's nothing like a refreshing Lux Soap bath. And Lux in the new bath size is so luxurious. Have you tried this generous, satin smooth bath cake Diana Lynn recommends? You'll be delighted with its rich, creamy lather, abundant even in hardest water. Active lather that leaves skin fresh and sweet. Looks lovely all over. The flower-like fragrance is a favorite with screen time. It's a delicate perfume that cleans. Put Lux Toilet Soap in the big bath size on your shopping list tomorrow. Discover why nine out of ten screen stars use this fragrant white beauty soap. Viva Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Cheaper by the Dozen, starring Clifton Webb. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Our cast tonight with Johnny McGovern as Jed, Bill Johnstone as Briggs, and Herbert Butterfield as Bush. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Clips and Webb in Cheaper by the Dozen. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Sir, stay tuned for My Friend Irma, starring Marie Wilson. A little silly lady, little silly bat. If you wanna be my happy, then you wanna stop that. Yes, bud cigarettes are cooler than cool. That's S-P-U-T.